So welcome, Andy. Thanks, Brandon. Andy is kind of in a, hey. unique, in a unique position because not only does he get to sit down with customers and hear about their challenges, but he also drives a lot of the engineering and the fixes to the problems that he sees. And, you know, he has a baby at home that has two parents, but NQE has one, babe, one parent, and that's, <laughs> that's him. And so if you've ever had questions you want to ask, this is going to be kind of like a mix of fireside chat and FAQ. And to make it more fun, we're going to, have a, we're going to play a game. We're going to involve the delegates who are here with chances to win awesome, awesome prizes. In fact, let me get one of those prizes right now. It's right here. We now have a networking gold chain that I will model for everyone. <laughs> so there's, there are high stakes here for this game. And the way it's going to work is I'm going to show three moments of truth that, that heavily influenced where NQE went. Right? These were the moments where we learned the most as a company. Andy learned the most as a language designer here trying to solve actual problems in networking. And we're just going to, I think, jump into it. And we'll have a moment shortly where We'll call in a delegate and they'll say, you know, we'll ask you higher or lower. Did it take more or less than a year to answer a particular question? So sound good? Yeah. All right. Andy, you want to start us off? I see a picture here. It says router pairs and holiday checks. And there's a picture of what looks like Christmas morning. What does that mean? Yeah. So um, this was around, I think, mid-2018. And we had a, a network operator come to us with a problem. They had recently had some outages um, around this problem. So this, this like was a topic that was like really top of mind for them. Uh, they had, it involved uh, four routers. So two pairs of routers, you had BGP, uh, you had a downstream network and an upstream network and uh, two pairs of BGP peers of, of routers. And um, these were supposed to be like active and failover, active and backup peerings. And um, they wanted these routes to be the routes learned, the routing policies should be consistent, and the routes learned on active and backup should be should be the same. And so, um, but you know, in, in actual fact, there were some misconfigurations, and and on the backup routers, uh, the routes were not learned um, correctly. So they came to us and asked, you know, can you can you do that? You know, is that something your platform can do? And we said, well, no, not right now. <laughs> and they said, well, but you have the data, don't you? you I mean, data, you right? collect yeah. it, right? And we said, yeah, that's that's true. We have that data. So can you build that for us? And you know, we had to, we were like, well, yeah, we could we could go and engineer that um, and build it. And we were thinking about how to do that. Uh, but at the same time, we had these, there's also the holiday checks. So we had another customer coming to us and asking us kind of similar-ish questions. They said, Well, you actually you heard about the holiday checks already from Kevin. So, you know, they wanted to do these hygiene checks instead of just before the shopping season, they wanted to do it always. And, you know, do you do our holiday checks? No, we don't do those, but could you? I mean, you have the data, so um, we could. And so- So it feels like you're getting a yeah, realization here. Yeah, so we, but we didn't have, you know, the, the basically we're a bottleneck. So we have the data, but there's, we, we have, the realization is we have a lot of data that's valuable in ways that, for purposes that we're not using it for, that we, we didn't anticipate. And um, we're a bottleneck. Engineering is currently a bottleneck in this process because people have to ask us to add every, every use case to the system. So basically give them the data and preferably in JSON. That was like basically our realization. All right, <laughs> it's time for swag. Let's play the game. So from this realization until shipping code and the product, how long do you think it was? I'll start with you, Carl. Was it higher or lower, like longer or shorter than one year from that realization to code you could try to solve that problem? Less than a year. Less than a year. Okay. Let's hear from Andy what happened next. So you had this realization. Let's just get right. the data. How did you make that possible? Yeah. So um, we were pretty modest here. We, we really did not think this was like a really big deal in our product. So we just, we tried to look for, you know, off the shelf components that we could put together to give people this data. So we looked out, we saw GraphQL. That would look like a really nice way to put an API in front of a, you know, a complex data set and let users pick out parts of it. And then for the, the actual organization of the data, we found that the good folks over at OpenConfig had already defined a whole bunch of schemas and data models for networks. So that's what we grabbed for, uh, for our data models. So basically it was GraphQL you know, with an OpenConfig organized data on top of the data that we already had. And that's what we gave to people. Um, I think the timeline was um, 
we were talking about this mid 2018 September 18 we started to build it by October it was in the product and then we actually presented it in uh, an NFD in January so so five months about until original yeah. NQB was released and presented by Andy at, at a network field day so you get to pick Carl from the big bucket of swag oh cool okay oh, someone <laughs> over there okay um <laughs> All right, so Andy, you, you released NQE, and tell me, what's the reception? I see the picture for Christmas morning. Is it is it like the, the holiday Elmo or yeah. of the networking world, or is it the socks? Uh, I, I think it's the <laughs> So, yeah, it was like, so the reason the gift is there, I mean, it's like a gift, right? You get, you get this gift, it's great. Um, some gifts are like real hits, and other gifts, what happens is it looks great on day one, but then a couple months later, it's sitting on a shelf gathering dust. You know, and uh, that's what happened with this. Unfortunately, uh, people really liked the idea, great reception. But when it came down to it, we weren't getting a ton of usage. Um, and so, um, yeah, about six months later, um, we that's an incident, right? Now yeah, download blocked. What is that? Yeah, mean? so that's right. So, so about six months later, you know, we have an event like this, um, this package download blocked thing. So. We're working with a customer. They're really motivated to solve this use case using the data that we have. They fire up their Python environment, start trying to you know get things going, and it doesn't work. So they call us up and say, "Hey, your platform doesn't work." You know, uh, we jump on a call. We're trying to figure it out. We're we end up like debugging their Python environment and finding that their you know their package manager is pointed at a custom corporate uh, package repository that doesn't have the packages that they need or doesn't have the versions that they need. And, and this is like the most common package you'd ever want, Python yeah. requests. Like how you do any API call, it's the default method almost. Right. So yeah. they're just, their environment's not letting them, you know, do the, ba the bare minimum. Right. Yeah, so, you know, they're stuck at step one um, and we're debugging Python environments and it's really not a good use of our time. Yeah, All right. and so, so. Sounds like we're at a realization that we can't be debugging customers' Python environments. It sounds like it's time to put Right in a box or, or something like that. Yeah. So basically, um, and there were a whole bunch of things that kind of derailed people. Um, it was, you know, where do I deploy code? Even if I got through that process, where do I put the code? How do I share the results and all that stuff? So the realization is that is just not working. We need to basically put the code in, like put the Python or the code into our platform and take care of all those kind of environmental things, take those out of the equation. All right. Ding, ding, ding. So now we're at a realization and we have a game show moment here. So did it take more or less than a year from this realization to shipping code that would put, you know, put the code in a box? I'm gonna go with less. Less than a year. Okay. What happened, Andy? Yeah. So this picture with boxing gloves. Right. So um, so the boxing gloves are there because we basically had to, as we were thinking about how to do this, there are basically two um, you know, major approaches to simplify things. Um, one was to essentially take what customers were doing, um, you know, at that time. So basically they were writing Python scripts against our API. So take that and just move it into our platform and sort of like, yeah, Python in the box. That was approach one. And then at the same time, you know, some of us were thinking, you know, maybe Python is overkill here. If we're looking at the use cases that customers are doing, they're doing some data manipulation, some filtering, some correlation. We're building a network database. There's, you know, there's a, we're using GraphQL as our query language. That's not really a good fit anyway. So maybe if we just make the query language a little bit better, then users will be able to solve most of their problems just with just with the query language but so just with what like this is two opinions like these are two camps yeah in your own mind right you're not sure which direction is the right one for the users yeah definitely like um you know this is this is just kind of the, the thinking process here about these two approaches like if we have a if we make our query language better people won't need two tools they'll just be able to use one tool for most of their tasks and that should be better but this, but you know, we were we were debating this, and um, so how do you settle the debate? Like, what comes next? Yeah. So, so this was like, um, you know, very. This elicited a, like very passionate um, responses in the company. People yeah, were very it's passionate. Them, right? it's, There's a lot of good ideas on both sides, right? Opinions. So yeah, this is like Vim versus Emacs or tabs and spaces kind of thing. You know, people <laughs> are people are really um, passionate, but at the end of the day, um, you know, it comes down to you know 
it's what, what helps our customers solve their problems. So could we, we thought, let's put it to the test. Let's see if we give this to customers. Is there one that comes out as a, as a winner in terms of helping people solve their problems faster? Um, so we worked with our UX team and um, they helped us design a test. We, we came up with a set of tasks uh, that you know, came from these, these asks that we were getting. Um, and we found a set of, of test subjects, you know, representative uh, network engineers and operators, and we had them solve all the problems you know, with one way and with the other. So with Python against our, but, our API, okay. and then so with there's, this- There's no implementation. So how do you do a test without an implementation? Yeah. Yeah, so we did the lean start startup kind of thing. So we didn't have a we didn't have this implemented. So uh, so we did it kind of Wizard of Oz style. So well, with the Python thing, we had people actually, you know, writing Python in their favorite kind of environment. Um, but since NQE, the query language didn't exist, you know, I was NQE for a little while. Like fit, you know, like people would type in queries and then I would type back the answer. You know, you were the or, or they would mistype something and I would say, um, I don't understand what M U T is. Did you mean M T U? You know, like I would, I would like verbally. So I got a good experience and a good feeling for like what a good error message is and stuff like that. So through that process, that was actually kind of helpful. And what were the um, results? Yeah, so, so you had a bunch of test subjects. You <laughs> ran them through the gauntlet. You were the Wizard of Oz. What did you right? Find? Um, so I was really surprised because um, a lot of our our uh, testers were familiar with Python. So I really thought that Python with a good API, data API, would be that would come out, you know, the winner. But we were really surprised that it was it was like hands down. It was like night and day. Um, our testers typically failed. Uh, solving the problems using Python, you know, they would they would go down some some rabbit hole of debugging and and googling and something like that. Whereas with the NQE, the proto NQE at the time, um, even though they just learned it in five minutes during the test, they were able to get through their tasks. And so, um, you know, I was asking, um, I was asking our our UX uh, team, like, should we? I think we should get some more data. You know, I'm just not sure. I just feel like. Maybe we should do it again. And they were like, no, please, like, like it's unethical at this point to continue. Like it's really clear um, what the winner was. Like it was clear enough at that time that we could move forward with, with the one approach. Yeah. And so yeah, the timeline on that was basically um, I think in May we were having these discussions. Um, in August we did these tests, and then by October we had implemented it and presented it uh, at NFD. Awesome. So that was about six months total to showing off an NFD, a vastly changed NQE. So you've won. Nice yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. What's, what's the reception? Does this unblock those customers that have challenges with their Python environments and super locked down corporate environments? Yeah, no, it, it really, um, it was like in, in, in the first week that we had released it, um, customers were using it. And um, you know that weren't using our previous approach, and they were building checks immediately. So with all the warts that it had at the time, um, they were running with it, and um, so it really validated our findings. Yeah. All right. And so we're going to jump into this kind of next picture that looks interesting to me. I see a, what kind of looks like an unfinished car or a kit car or a fast car that's not that doesn't have a body, and it says three hundred checks in one folder. So what does that mean? Yeah. So customers were just running with this at this point. They were starting to build out checks. Um, you know, we had Jack, um, one of our resident engineers, was working with a customer, had helped work with them to build like three hundred checks on like a big, you know, fifty thousand node network, something like that, and. Um, it was just getting really out of hand, like the, the complexity. We weren't prepared for the scale. So just things like finding a query became problematic. Um, we had code duplication everywhere. You know, you have like these 10 line functions for figuring out the region of a device. And that was copied in, you know, hundreds of places. So you have thousands of lines of code duplication. It was just getting crazy. Um, so the realization at that point was that we had essentially like the chassis, we had the basics that was go that was going to work, but we needed to kind of complete the experience. You know, people needed the air, the air conditioning and the body and all the other things to actually make it work for them. All right, so this is our third critical realization: we need to complete the experience. Do you think it took more than a year or less than a year to complete the experience and ship that? 
I would say more than a year. More than a year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Different than the other guesses. Going bold. <laughs> Andy, how long did it take yeah. to implement all that stuff so, that we just saw, Kevin Demo? So it, it took more than a year. Yeah, it was a long period of... Um, more swag coming your way. Yeah. Every, every person <laughs> yesterday, we have yeah, the most delegates in the world. We're three and very lucky guests. startups and how they work. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of stuff, right? It, it, it isn't just one single thing. That's right. It wasn't one single magic bullet here. There was a lot to, to refine. You know, We added the NQA library, which lets people organize their, their code into folders and have separate reports and checks and we added modules to kind of enable code reuse um, and we added new ways of getting data out of configuration files and getting data from json so yeah it was a lot of it was a lot of refinements that helped it to help round it out okay and that brings us to to modern nqe to the, the future of nqe actually and this is what the question right. i wanted to ask you the most are we done yet or is there still really exciting stuff left on the horizon tell me what what motivates you to continue working on nqe now that you're over five years into this yeah so i i think that there's so much interesting uh the road is super interesting ahead um so um for example you know i'm really excited that about bringing in more data in particular forward forward has this incredible like the most valuable you know data about networking in my opinion is all this behavior behavioral analysis oh, that you know tells you about paths and reachability and ultimately like security answers questions about security and all that is not yet in nqe because we've been focusing on exposing data that's that's not else you know available elsewhere in the platform but if we bring some of that most valuable data into nqe i think it'll enable all kinds of really interesting um checks that you know people haven't done yet um, we're going to be bringing in like normalized ACL and NAT data. That's a really uh, commonly asked for feature. Um, and I'm also really excited to just continue to work on making it easier to build, to get the data that, that uh, people need. So it uh, could range from like making, net, making NQEs sort of more network aware and smarter about the network so that you, you know, query writers don't have to do as much work. Or even some, in some cases, we can build out experiences where you can you can uh, construct queries without having to write code. So um, so yeah, I'm, I think there's a, there's a lot of interesting work left. I think that would be pretty exciting yeah. because each time you make it easier, you get a, a factor of ten or more increase in the number of people that can really make you. Something. Yeah, I mean, and, and we connecting it back to the hackathon and wrapping things up. Right, we saw the power of data when it's available to people and when friction isn't getting in the way getting to the data and getting insights based on that. And I think that is my takeaway and, and that's where we're gonna end things. So I wanna thank everyone for joining, you know, going back to the, what we call the bow tie diagram now, it's all about the data. Can you get to the data? How many people can get to the data and how many people can make use of that data? And it's more people than you might think. So if you wanna learn more, I have to point you to the website to read the use cases, to watch explainer videos. So. These are really short videos trying to show a single concept and increasingly we're doing what we call forward fixes which are really short few minutes long videos of a problem and a solution so it's almost like a compressed version of nfd on demand on your own schedule much much faster can i use your tool also to uh, simulate building networks from scratch without any data in the beginning so today that's not a possibility we have to collect data from a network mm -hmm. that exists you could use something like EVNG or GNS if you have the images. You could build the network in there and then model it, um, which you know we do all the time. It's kind of awesome to do it that way uh, because you can interact with what you built and, and test it and, and do those kind of things. And I hope that gave you a little bit of a window into something you rarely get from demos, which is why in the hell did they do it that way? Right? Why not Python is the number one question. The other one is why did you even build this in the first place?